I wanted to take the experience that everybody would had in lockdown, that experience of isolation, of going on a journey somewhere. It was a very joyful coming together. We were wearing masks and we were socially distanced, which was tricky. We were two metres apart. So in terms of playing together, that wasn't the easiest thing. But uh, It's just great to be back together. We're seeing more people actually having a conductor. Because <laughs> we're in our office, it's just fab to be back in the, back in the saddle. Brilliant. It's nice to be here. It's really, it's a really great space. It's like the studio we use for time lapse in a way. It's a nice big right. shell and it's good for, for sound as well. So, yeah. Yeah, challenging start. Um, a piece that's very much about rhythm in a big space where we're all, you know, having to hold on to each other's coattails. Yeah, we did some really great work and considering there's a lot of really tired people there now, I think. A cup of tea now and everyone will have lots of energy. We've gone as an orchestra from having absolutely no digital content at all to having to really think outside the box and I think it's brought out a creative side of the organisation that's really special. Yeah, I think it's fantastic what the orchestra are doing and, and the audiences that they're reaching and the creative ways in which they're presenting their work. I'm always looking at doing things differently. We're going to try something new. We're going to take ourselves out of our comfort zone. We're going to experiment. Like, how, how do we actually like connect with people that want to listen to our music, and how how do we invite them in? You know, not not necessarily thinking like, oh, how do we grab them and make people do what we want them to do and sit there and listen to us, but like, how do we actually like engage with people? There's this process and protocol and formality that comes along with classical music where you all sit in your rows, you applaud at the right place, you you can't bring your drink in, you you we just like to just break that down a little bit. There are so many different idioms, different styles of music. They all work together. They all sit in the same emotional space. I think that's very important. It's something that I've always been interested in. I grew up, I was born in the 70s, and that was kind of bang slap in the middle of album territory, gatefold sleeves, vinyl, all of that sort of stuff. But I think it's more about the journey of the pieces. And what we're doing here is going back to that a little bit, because much as I love streaming and the easy access for everybody, you do get uh, a, a little lost in the random play aspect of it. Streaming is here to stay, it's part of the mix. Like, let's make it better and let's make it work. And like, how is, let's kind of let the restrictions and limitations of what that is have a positive effect on how we make music rather than sort of begrudging the fact that people don't listen to an entire album anymore. So I think you can listen to these albums in, in two ways. You can listen to them from start to finish, almost as a symphony, if you, if you like, or you can listen to them, you can take out, you can cherry pick your, your favourite tracks. I always think of the arrangements less as arrangements and more like reimaginings. I don't want them to be cover versions, so they're not facsimiles. It's something beyond the notes. I'm trying to access 
what they were accessing on the original recording, but do it for a classical orchestra without it sounding lame. I, I don't think I've seen another orchestra do so many different things like over this last year, like and and trying to sort of just trying things, you know, just like what happens if we do this and like what about this and, and they've had some amazing success. So I'm really happy for him, you know, happy to see an orchestra, you know, like really making the most of this, you know, kind of what has been for a lot of, well, for all of us in some way, a horrendous year. <laughs> Um, but how brilliant to have all this amazing music coming off the back of it that wouldn't have happened possibly otherwise. I'd say that musicians are probably some of the most bendy people in terms of activities. So I think that we've all been pretty good at shape-shifting into different guises. I've been uh, volunteering as a vaccinator, which is entirely selfish. I'm just like, let's get this thing out so I can get <laughs> back on the stage into the sacred space. and the transformation in the last year has been phenomenal and we, I mean we look back now a year ago and we think oh lord what what a change in the way we've approached everything in the way we're just thinking about what the digital audience actually wants and we're able now to respond much better than than we were a year ago where it was it was knee-jerk. I think it's important to realize that classical music doesn't or shouldn't exist in a vacuum. It has to be aware of everything else that's going on and the needs of audiences as well. I'm passionate about connecting with new audiences. So for me, the Labyrinth is certainly an illustration of coming out of that quite dark time, really, and also realising how much human contact that you needed. And that's a theme on the album. Time Lapse was recorded going into lockdown and Labyrinths was recorded and conceived towards the end of lockdown when there was light at the end of the tunnel. 